you'll know that over the last few days, I've been particularly uh, focusing on whistleblowers. And specifically, I, I spoke to Dr. Jane Somerville yesterday, who was uh, one of the people who organized the tremendous conference uh, for uh, the doctor's conference for patient patient safety uh, for the doctors for justice. And there were lots of interesting talks and discussions uh, going on about that, but specifically the huge amount of money uh, wasted by NHS trusts in pursuing whistleblowers and uh, pursuing them to the courts, uh, haranguing them to the point that their jobs disappear, uh, their mental health collapses, and so on. And yet, at the same time, the NHS and the various Whitehall officials uh, pontificating about mental well-being. Today, I, um, I, 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 I was um, directed to a tremendous conversation uh, between Gary Waterman. He also talks about Gordon Bowden, uh, an ex-police man who uh, is, was talking with Maya Tusi about whistleblowing in the police forces, and specifically they were talking about a, a, a specific forgery and fraud that's been going on in Company House with the connivance, it appears, uh, of government officials. And, uh, and it's part of a system to register fake businesses because there isn't a proper verification system in the process of registering a limited company or, 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 or whatever. Uh, in last year, there was a commitment by Companies House to undertake a selective verification of details. But uh, Gary points out that this um, omission... Uh, this specific omission uh, allows for the criminal behavior of um, uh, weapons and trafficking and white-collar crime, tax evasion, money laundering, and the whole industry of covering up issues. Because in the end, the company can be dissolved with no liability, no accountability, because it doesn't exist because the address is fake, because the people who run it are fake, and because there is no verification of the details in the first place. It's, it's an appalling story. And what I found so interesting was, in his case, uh, Maya said, well, have you, been, have you been attacked? Have you been targeted? He says, no, I've just been ignored. And I, I realised there are two ways in which the official systems in the UK deals with um, difficult whistleblowing. One is to attack, and the other is to ignore. And the ignoring seems to be particularly for those people who have direct experience, who have the information, they're simply ignored. And I, I find it extraordinary. What you've got in the post office story is a mixture of the two, the attacking and also the ignoring, which is why it's taken so long. You've got the same thing in the uh, haemophilia issue, which is why it's taken so long. And, uh, and, and then you've also got the thing which is so beautifully uh, exemplified by Malkinson's exoneration in court and the promise of compensation and the distraction that, oh yes, we're not going to charge you for accommodation in a prison. That sleight of hand masks the fact that there is a difference between the rhetoric of, oh yes, we're going to pay you and the reality of actually getting the money. It doesn't happen. That, 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 that lacuna, you know, they're just waiting they're just waiting for people to tire or die because, because that commitment really isn't there. And now, of course, there's a new, a new ruse. Why do you think, why do you think Jeremy Hunt committed to pay 
so much money to the haemophilia sufferers, to the people with, who have been linked to infected blood. Why did he commit to pay so much money yesterday or today? Why? Because he won't have to do it. He's well aware that the Conservative Party is likely to lose the next election. So this is going to be a sum of money which will have to be found by the incoming Labour Party. I would not be surprised if he makes similar huge commitments for the post office, for Windrush, um, uh, for Covid and so on. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes these undertakings because it it, it, it will it will severely impact on the budgeting that can be done by an incoming government. But I'm afraid it's also the right thing to do. It's not only that um, we have to compensate the victims and do so speedily. The longer it lasts, the more it costs. But we also have to uh, identify the culprits, the people who have manufactured this fraud, this crime, this oversight, this negligence, whatever it happens to be, people have to be held responsible. And holding an inquiry, I don't know whether you should be spelling that with an I or an E, uh, but holding an inquiry is simply a delaying tactic, as we have seen so beautifully in the post office inquiry. People don't even need to give proper answers. It's a piece of theatre. It's a pantomime. And it delays the point where the government actually has to put its fingers in its pocket and pull out money, not a chocolate. Willy Wonka reference. And it's, it's an appalling abuse of power. An appalling abuse of power. And we need to call it out every time... It manifests. So thank you particularly to uh, Gary Waterman and to Maya Tusi for that one.